Hello and welcome back to iSpy to a new video in a series of lens and cataract lectures. And this video is a continuation part of senile cataract of which in first part nuclear cataract we have already discussed. Who haven't watched that yet? I would like you to watch that too before this. Link for nuclear cataract you can find in the description box below. So let's start with our second type of senile cataract, cortical cataract. So again, as we say cortical cataract, its name tells us the location of cataract, which is cortex, located in the periphery of the lens. So cortical cataract is also known as peripheral cataract. So what will be the patient's complaint? Patients having cortical cataract will complain of more loss of vision in nighttime or dim light conditions because now opacity is in the periphery. The light rays won't be able to pass in dim light as pupil will be dilated and patients complain of more loss of vision in dim light or night time. And if you notice, it is exactly opposite to nuclear cataract. Now, we'll see pathology of cortical cataract in which we'll understand the pathologic changes and what are the structural changes which leads to the formation of cortical cataract. So, the main process involved in cataract formation is hydration, imbibition of fluid in the lens and now if fluid flows inside the lens, lens will become soft. So morphologically, cortical cataract is soft and also known as soft cataract. Again, opposite to nuclear cataract which is hard in nature and cortical is soft. Now coming to the classification of this cortical cataract. Then we have two kinds of cortical cataract depending upon the appearance and location of the opacities. One is cuneiform variety of the cortical cataract and another is cupuliform type of cortical cataract. Out of these two, cuneiform variety is more common. Now, what is cuneiform? The word cuneiform means wedge shaped. So, if you see lens here, then there are wedge shaped opacities coming from the lens periphery and going towards center and are close to equator of the lens leaving the center of the lens clear so it is visually insignificant in early stage but gradually interfere with the axial area and vision becomes impaired and most commonly they are found in the inferonasal quadrant or first occurs in inferonasally and subsequently all around and it is most common type of senile cataract now coming to the cupuliform and also known as posterior cortical cataract. So what is cupuliform cataract? So there is a disc like opacity present in the center and what is the location? So it is in the posterior cortex. So if you see a cross section view then it starts in the central part of the posterior cortex and progresses towards the equator. And now because it is central it will cause early diminution of vision in patients having cupuliform cataract and one thing which is very important is that it is also most visually handicapping type of cataract because of its location present close to the nodal point of the eye and obstruct light rays. Patient with posterior cortical cataract or cupuliform cataract will have vision problem during the day because pupil is constricted and patient is literally blinded in a daytime called hemarlopia means day blindness and patient will also complain of glare specifically at night time. Now let's see what are the stages of formation of this cortical cataract and it can be divided into different stages and the very first stage is lamellar separation. Lamellar means layers and to remind you why this cortex maturation or cortical cataract is taking place. So it was due to overhydration. Overhydration is actually responsible for the cortical cataract. And the earliest change that can occur is the formation of water clefts and vacuoles. That you can also appreciate on slit lamp examination with uh, retroillumination technique as small small water pockets or vacuoles. And these water vacuoles within the lens act as a prism and will disperse light. And you know when dispersion of light occurs, the white light gets broken down into its components with your colors. 
So, what is the patient's classical symptom at this point? That is going to be a colored halos and glare because of maximum scattering of light in this stage. And now when the hydration keeps on occurring, these water pockets or vacuoles will start to enlarge and combine together to form a sheet or a layer of water. And now what will you see is that there will be a layer of lens, then layer of water and again layer of fibers and then layer of water. And it keeps on occurring. And I can say that a layer of fibers are now separated by a water layer or water sheets. And these water layers are known as lamellar. And that is why the stage is called as lamellar separation. Let's move on to the next stage which is described as incipient cataract. So the word incipient means very early. Something which has just happened. So also known as early cataract. And even though cataract started developing in lamellar separation stage, but this is the first stage where cataractous changes will be seen or starts getting visible. And this is the stage where depending on the development and location of opacities, it can be classified as cuneiform or cipuliform cataract. And what will be the symptom? So patient will complain of uniocular polyopia where poly means multiple and opia means vision or images. So patient with incipient cataract will experience multiple images with single eye. And this is due to the opacities developing in the cortical area here and there. And these opacities in the lens leads to change in reflective index of lens different at different positions or locations. So where opacities are present, refractive index changes and at different areas of lens, we have different refractive index. And when we have multiple refractive index, so we have multiple powers and multiple focal lengths, means multiple images. So in this stage, patient will have uniocular polyopia. Now, because more and more hydration is taking place, so further change is happening in lens. And there will be a third stage called immature senile cataract or we usually call it as IMSC. So what is the meaning? What is the immature here? So here immature means partial. So there is a partial opacification of lens fibers and called as immature senile cataract. Now partial opacification means there is still certain areas are clear and we have a clear cortex present in the lens. So in immature stage, most of the fibers have become opaque and we have combination of clear and opaque lens fibers. And due to this combination, there are certain findings that you get in IMSC. In which first of all, talking about the color, the color is grayish white. It is grayish white in color due to this partial opacification. And now second thing is that you can see in IMSC is it also shows iris shadow. So iris shadow is present here. And if I talk about vision, then vision may be reduced to finger counting. Now due to the continuous overhydration, lens is becoming swollen and swollen. And there is a change in the morphology of lens. The shape of the lens has become swollen. It has increased in size. And we call it intumescent cataract, where intumescence means swelling of cells. And here intumescent means swollen, full of water. And this is the next stage in the cortical maturation, which may or may not occur. So this is a plus minus kind of stage. If it doesn't occur, the immature cataract progresses to become mature cataract. Now back to the intumescent. So when the lens is full of water or swollen, it affects adjacent structures around the lens. So let's see, this is the normal lens here and here when the lens is swollen up, it pushes aqueous humor and iris forwards. Which lead to the shallow or narrow angle of anterior chamber will cause obstruction in the flow of aqueous humor. So when anterior chamber angle is shallow, it affects drainage of aqueous humor which leads to raise in intraocular pressure. And when there is increase in intraocular pressure and obstruction in the aqueous outflow, it can lead to glaucoma. And here we call it as secondary angle closure glaucoma 
the term secondary is used because it is due to the lens that is secondary to some other condition lens induced glaucoma and it is also called as phacomorphic glaucoma now what does this mean phaco means the lens and morphic means morphology or the shape of the lens so the glaucoma which is occurring due to the changes in the morphology of the lens is called as phacomorphic glaucoma this is one of the important complication that can occur due to the cataract so here what will be the treatment of choice for this phacomorphic glaucoma and that will be treating the underlying cause and here underlying cause is swollen lens so the treatment is cataract extraction and now we have next stage in cortex maturation is mature senile cataract and can also be called as msc so what is mature as we had partial opacification and we called it immature senile cataract so now here we have total opacification all the fibers are opaque now and we call it mature senile cataract now if i talk about the color then this cataract is pearly white in appearance with no iris shadow we do not see iris shadow here because there is no clear cortical fibers left for the formation of iris shadow so is absent and vision may drop up to hand movement to perception of light so if we do not operate or patient is not getting surgery on the mature senile cataract stage and the process of lens degeneration continues it goes into the next stage called hypermature senile cataract also called as hmsc on examination it appears as milky white or chalky white in color hypermature cataract can present in two forms either it can present as a morganian hypermature cataract or it can present as a sclerotic hypermature cataract let's begin with morganian cataract in morganian cataract we are getting the lysis or the liquefaction of the cortex proteins so the proteins which are present in the cortex they are becoming solid to liquid they are getting liquefied with intact capsule so there is no problem with the capsule that is absolutely fine but becomes semi permeable or leaky so let's see with the diagram here we have ocular structures and the lens holded by ciliary zonules and we have nucleus in the central area having brownish or yellow color and surrounding the nucleus is cortical cataract which was supporting the nucleus but now these proteins have become liquefied cortex itself a fluid and therefore no support for nucleus and nucleus sinks or will settle down at the bottom due to the effect of gravity and this is what a morganian cataract looks like on a slit lamp this yellowish brownish color object that you can see at the lower part is the lens nucleus that has sunk to the bottom of the capsular bag and rest of it is a liquefied cortex so what will happen the lens capsule is now converted into a bag of milky white fluid with nucleus settled down at the bottom now what happens outside the lens so capsule leaks cortical particles in the anterior chamber that reaches to the trabecular meshwork and clogged it and as a result aqueous outflow is impaired which will again lead to glaucoma but now the ac angle is open so is called as secondary open angle glaucoma or also called as phacolytic glaucoma where phaco is for lens and lytic because the lysis happens in the lens which is cortex proteins becoming solid to liquid so this is another important complication that can occur due to cataract and what will be the treatment of choice for this phacolytic glaucoma is again by treating the underlying cause which is extraction of cataract now coming back to another type of hypermature senile cataract which is a sclerotic hypermature cataract and the sclerosis means thickening or hardening of a structure and it is quite different from the morganian cataract where cortex proteins becomes liquefied and opposite to that in sclerotic we got disintegration of cortex and turns thick in consistency because of that whole lens shrinks in size lens volume decreases and in addition to that that lens capsule become wrinkled that you can see on slit lamp examination 
so this is sclerotic type of hypermature cataract you can see that this is a total cataract but opposed to mature cataract this hypermature cataract has a dirty white appearance and the capsule looks wrinkled and opacified and this is a hypermature cataract of sclerotic type and here we are done with the cortical cataract stages of cortical maturation symptoms signs and clinical features and complications related to that in the next video we'll see another type of acquired cataract thank you for watching like share comment and subscribe